exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I came to have church this morning. I don't know if there's anybody else in the house who came to have church. And one of the reasons I came this morning to have church, the preacher told me last night, he's keeping me. He's keeping me. Do I have a witness this morning? Then come on, let's give him the glory. Let's give him the praise. Let's exalt his name like he is. Like he is. Keep him. Hallelujah. 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 Before you take your seats, just turn around and just give your neighbor a good God bless you, a hug, and tell your neighbor he's keeping me. come this day with great expectation of the presence of the glory of the Lord being in this sacred space. Our prayer this morning shall be given to us by the Reverend Reginald Johnson from the Holy Nation Baptist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our prayer shall be followed immediately by the scripture, the reading of the scripture by Pastor Michael Golden of the Great Emmanuel Church of God in Christ in Norfolk, Virginia. Hear ye them. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Wonderful Jesus. Glorious God, Father, we've come to declare that there is none like you. You are the great I am. You are altogether lovely and altogether wonderful. And so, God, we thank you this morning because you woke us up and started us on our way. We thank you, O oh God, because we are in our right mind. We thank you, O oh God, because we had the opportunity to come into your presence one more time. And God, since we're here, we decided to bless you and to worship you, O oh God. For you are the true and the living God, and there is no other like you. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, we come interceding and praying right now. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would let your glory fill this place. You said in the name of Jesus, oh God, that where two or three of us were, that you were right there in the midst. And so God, because there are more than two or three, oh God, we expect your glory this morning, oh God. Father, we didn't come for form or fashion, oh God, but we came because we've got needs, oh God. Somebody came with a need, oh God, over their ministry. Somebody came, oh God, because they need healing in their body. Somebody came, oh God, because they're on the brink of giving up. But in the name of Jesus, oh God, we ask that your glory would manifest itself. We pray, oh God, that your glory would be in this place. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would allow the word of God to fall fresh in this place. 
Father, we can deal without a lot of things, but we need your word, oh God. Because if we hide your word in our spirit, oh God, we shall not fall or faint. Father, we pray over this mighty man of God even now, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would give him clarity of thought, articulation of speech, and that you would bring wisdom to his humble words. Father, whatever you do, speak to us, your children. We thank you and we glorify you. And because we believe it's already done, we're going to praise you like it's already done. We're going to give you praise, oh God, because we believe, oh God, that you're working it together for our good. In Jesus' name we pray and the people of God said amen. comes to us on this morning from Psalms 30, the first through the fifth verses. And the word declares thusly, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. God bless you. Oh, come, let us adore you. selection the Reverend Dr. Jamal Harrison of Bryant will come and break the bread of life let's receive uh, the ministry of music and then the ministry of the word with a hearty amen presence of the Lord this morning is anybody expecting anything this morning in the presence of the Lord I believe that the atmosphere of expectation is the greeting ground the greeting the breeding ground for miracles and I believe miracles are in this place this morning yeah. Yeah. above all power 
above all kings, above all nature and all creative things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Cause you were crucified He laid you behind the stone Yet you lived and died Rejected and alone Just like the rose They trampled you on the ground Thank you, Father You took the fall and thought of me above all you were crucified they laid you behind the stone where you lived and died you were rejected and alone just like the rose they trampled on the ground you took the fall You thought of me You did it just for me Just for me Yes, Jesus came and did it Just for me Woo, Thank you for it, Lord Just for me you died just for me I'm glad that Jesus came and did just for me And we sing Holy Spirit You are welcome here Just flood this place and fill the atmosphere we came for your glory god that's what our hearts have longed for is to be overcome by your presence lord oh, holy spirit be welcome we make room for you Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Oh, your glory, God, is what our hearts, we came longing for it to be overcome by your presence. So with our hands lifted, this is our prayer today. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness oh let us become more aware of your presence yeah let us experience the glory of your goodness you say now let us become more aware of your presence hey. and let us experience the glory that comes from your goodness say hey. oh let us become more aware more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness and we'll sing that holy spirit you 
you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the air Fill this atmosphere cause your glory God is what our hearts long for Is to be overcome by your presence Consuming fire Sweet perfume Your awesome presence Now fills this room Cause this is all holy ground This is holy, it's holy ground Hey, we reverence you now This is Consuming, say, consuming fire, sweet praise. Somebody raise your hands now and say, you're awesome, present. As we prepare for the word, oh, so come and bow, oh, bow down. We're not worthy, but we come today and bow. We bow down, we bow down. So come and bow. We bow down because you're holy. We come and bow. We bow down. We bring you our issues today. And we come now and bow. We are not ashamed of your presence. Not ashamed of your glory. So come and bow. Bow down and work. Father, we enter in. It will always remember. We'll never forget Jesus. We won't forget Jesus. 
will always remember we love the lamb who is Jesus how we love you Jesus oh always keep him on your mind for the rest of the week long always keep him on your mind father we love your presence today oh Always keep him on your, your mind. Now let's reverence his presence now in this room. I want you to clap your hands like you know he's worthy. Would you clap like you love him? You clapping like you got a crush on him. I want you to give him glory like he is the air you breathe. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. You may be seated for just one moment. I'm deliciously delighted to be able to stand and to have the nerve to speak on God's behalf. It is a living testimony that God recycles. There's no way in the world you can be anointed and be arrogant. The best singers never get a record contract. The best preachers don't have a mega church. The best actors are not seen on television. So whenever God gives your opportunity exposure, you have to know it ain't you, but it's the God in you. Would you do me a favor, not even for me, would you give God glory for your gift, for your assignment? Come on, would you thank him for the call that's on your life? President Harvey in absentia to Dean General Captain Sergeant at Arms Hagen. Thank you so much for your graciousness. To our illustrious, efficient, and effective president, to the cadre of this cabinet, for all of the preachers who are assembled, our past presidents, allow me, if you will, a point of personal privilege to uh, thank God for the life, the health, and the strength of my father. Today happens to be his birthday, uh, and I'm thankful for him thankful that God has blessed him for another year and I'm thankful for my mother who has kept him alive it's hard it's hard to preach people in heaven if you got hell at home but when you have somebody who can minister to you after the benediction, it helps you have revival before you get to the sanctuary. Help me thank God for Reverend Dr. Cecilia Bryan. John Maxwell once said, please don't tell me who you lead if you can't tell me who you follow. I'm thankful that my covering, my leadership, my bishop is here. He found it not robbery, not just him, but his wife. Help me thank God for Bishop William Phillips DeVoe. Thank you so much, Dr. Pam. 
While I'm mindful that we are in an ecumenical setting, I am beholden to the AME tradition. As a consequence, in 30 days, I don't know who my bishop will be. So thank God for Bishop White, for Bishop Richardson, Bishop McKenzie. Thank you so much for your presence on today. Uh, Bishop Rudolph McKissick, God bless you. Mark chapter 5. If, uh, if you have your Bible, would you uh, stand to your feet? We brought ministry products with us. One of them is called the Big Idea how to become infected with the Jabez disease. That everything you have is too small for you. And God has got to enlarge your territory. One of the peculiar gifts that God has entrusted me with is uh, one not readily seen in the 21st century church and that is the gift of dream interpretation to give understanding of dreams, clarity of dreams, and confirmation of dreams. Those of you who have a dream that has not yet come to pass, would you lift up that hand? God has shown you something. I want you to get this series on dreams and understanding the meaning of them. The good people here at Hampton have been gracious enough uh, to allot me a space in order uh, to share what God has given uh, to me. So at 12 noon, I ask that you will please meet me in this lower tier. Uh, we will uh, have staff here to help uh, assist you, and I'll be there uh, to talk about the big idea and uh, your dreams. I want you to take all of these products home uh, because we're at Hampton. We have a very uh, unique special. Uh, if you buy one of them, uh, the second one is at the exact same price. So I ask that you would please uh, get it on your way home. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, and I want to illuminate for your understanding just one verse. Verse 26. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and she spent all she had and instead of getting better she got worse you may be seated she has been all she had under many doctors and instead of getting better she got worse. I want to preach today using as a subject when the drugs don't work. When the drugs don't work. Charles Darwin championed the theory on survival of the fittest. And now, eons later, the fittest are becoming the sickest. Immediate measures by the World Health Organization are being investigated to prevent the probable deaths of 10 million inhabitants in so-called developed nations. Because in alleged first world territories, citizens are developing a resistance to antibiotics. Physicists and physicians are perplexed at how drugs are losing its effectiveness during serious procedures such as cesarean sections to even chemotherapy. Greater dosages are needed in order to reach sedation. The body 
in the 21st century is now producing its own antibody. Addicts who live in your area will attest to you that what got them high in 2006 won't give them a buzz in 2016. Numerous factors have been blamed for the state of a narcotic impotence ranging from the overuse of medication for the simplest of ailments like the common cold to the impact of chemicals given to livestock that after consumption the toxins are passed on from animals to humans. And so the aversion is now resident in the bloodstream. Dr. Booth Karl Marx once quipped that religion was the opiate of oppressed people. If that were true, the drug we're peddling has no street value. We are now dispensing sanctified sugar pills because the symptoms of society are not shifting. The body has built up a resistance because now even in small churches where you can have a good seat anywhere, we're putting up screens but we're not casting any vision. The drug don't work. The children's ministry is adolescent cough syrup when only 2% of 43 million millennials go to church. The milligrams of militancy is minuscule to black men when brothers who come to church can only get a job of being an armor bearer or a janitor but are never in fact given the option to become a disciple. Maybe it is appropriate in this setting that we would argue out loud that the absence of militancy is why Cassius Clay left Christianity. The community that you serve will ask to use your church for the funeral but no longer believe it's the place where they can get life. Because the drug don't work. Putting aside the politics of respectability the clergy is the only pusher in the hood with no respect. I'm a third generation preacher. And I can in fact see where the shift has happened within three generations. When it is Dr. Proctor, my grandfather of sainted memory, Bishop Harrison James Bryant, would drive down the street and pull up to a red light, men on the corner of McMeckin Street would put out their cigarette because Rev is here. I bore witness as a child going in the barber shop with my father and when he would show up immediately the conversation would change. Don't say that. Rev is here. I now pastor a generation who will now smoke in front of the church, wear their hat in the church, and cuss you out even if you got on a clergy collar. Why? Because the drug isn't working. I find it peculiar that none of you find it strange that at Friday morning at the conclusion of the matter after communion 
not one of the 10,000 preachers registered in this conference will have to catch a flight to Louisville. The most outspoken activist in the 21st century is having his memorial service and nobody in this room is preaching a eulogy. But to show the shifting of the time, they've asked the father of mass incarceration, three strikes and you're out, to give the last word. You not even presiding, they asked the host of Saturday Night Live, Billy Crystal, to oversee the final service of one of the most activists, outspoken activists of this hour. And you don't even realize the drug ain't working. Even when we do an autopsy on the alcoholic beverages sold in the black community, malt liquor is in mass marketing it is only in the community that you pastor that you can put billboards up for alcoholic beverages across from an elementary school but you glad to give out book bags because you don't know the drug ain't working the beer that's blended with sugar in an outsized 40 ounce bottle in the 80s, it was considered liquid crack. His alcohol content is at 5.6 compared to 3.5 in regular ale. Sociologists contend that it's a strategy to offer a cheap high and to foster alcoholism in a way that common brands do not. It is in fact disheartening, if in fact not disillusional, that you don't even realize that beer companies know something that the church won't acknowledge. That it takes a whole lot more to make black people break. You can't just give them a can and think that's gonna be the end. You gotta give them a supersized bottle just to numb the pain. Quiet as it's kept, and you won't find it on Fox or CNN, there are more white addicts and white alcoholics than black ones. Because it takes a whole lot to make black people break. You are the evidence of it. With all that you're dealing with, you should have had a nervous breakdown by now. It is amazing that you have a semblance of sanity when you are qualified to be in therapy twice a week. You still don't know how it is that you haven't killed two people. And the greatest testament of God's hand on your life is you're able to declare, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I find it peculiar that in the most recent past, three of our most innovative and creative artists, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and Prince, all succumbed to painkillers. Their respective physicians kept writing unlawful prescriptions because it wasn't enough. What is amazing, Dr. Curtis, is that all three of them, Prince, Michael Jackson, and Whitney, all three of them died after having performed just 72 hours prior. Which suggests to us that they uncannily could perform in pain, but suffer tremendously after they got off the stage. The problem with the gifted is that the gifted can cope while they're flowing in their vein, but they cannot adjust in the absence of adulation. And so the drug doesn't work. And so we try to find a fix to numb the pain. 
We're all right as long as we in the pulpit. It really doesn't hurt till after the benediction. So we keep trying to find a fix to help numb the pain. And, and, and we found varied drugs. Some, some of us get a fix on the golf course. Some of us get a core fix in a casino. Some of us get a fix in the strip club. Others of you get a fix with a dysfunctional schedule. Others of you, your fix is nonstop revivals. Others of you, your fix is personal charges on a church credit card. Some of you, your fix is in a cigar lounge. Others of us, your fix is in a shoe store. Just a few of you that will admit it, your fix is internet porn. And even after all of that, the drug still doesn't work. Because after you've in fact had the cigar, bought another suit, left the apartment of your side chick to go to the mansion of your own house, the pain is still there. And you realize something stronger is needed. As we jaywalk into the text, I believe that Mark chapter 5, for many of us in the room, may have been, in fact, found guilty of a misdiagnosis in exegesis. First of all, we perpetually break the medicinal confidentiality agreement of doctor patient privilege by gaining access to secure records only to unearth the fact that she's been bleeding for 12 years. You really don't know that you are authenticated in ministry until something you told in confidence becomes public record. Because your problem is you made your parishioner your friend. In verse 26, a pending lawsuit seems to be apparent because she had a, suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. And under closer scrutiny, might I posit that perhaps the culpability isn't fully with the doctors. It might be, Dr. Cecilia, that she had, in fact, built a resistance to medication. Her immune system is no longer intimidated by prescription. She had gone to doctors and all of you who have been there know that while in the waiting room you can't get past question number seven before the doctor asks you, are you taking anything? If yes, what are you taking? She had to fill out that form in triplicate. The doctor saw what she was taking and making sure that he would be the one who would take the credit for the medical breakthrough, put her on something stronger, thinking that would turn the corner. It would be one argument if in fact it was just one doctor. But she went to several. And all of them gave her different opinions, thinking they could fix it. So she first started off going to an AME clinic. And that didn't give her what she needed. So she said, let me go down the street to National Baptist. See if that'll give me what I need. I want more freedom, let me join the Kojic Clinic. They calling too many names, I only want one name, so let me join the Apostolic Hospital. 
I'm tired of them telling me what doctor I need to go see, so let me go see an independent one that's not connected to anything or anybody. And after she went to all of them, she's still not better. She's even getting worse. My dear friends, I, uh, I don't know the names of what they were giving her. All I know is it didn't work. I don't know how often she took it. All I know is it didn't work. I don't know whether it was liquid or tablet form. All I know is it didn't work. I find it peculiar that they would no longer see her only after her finances didn't match. As long as she was a top giver. As long as she stood in the hundred dollar line. They always had a word for her. But when she got broken, her insurance payment started to lapse. When she could no longer afford the copay, when she had to begin paying out of pocket, this is predating Obamacare, when she finds herself in a derelict place with no assistance, all of a sudden the people who were anxious to help her no longer would aid her. I think I better say something to 300 people in the room. You really don't know who you are to people until you go broke. God, I can't find nobody in here. This, uh, if you really want to know where you stand with folks, show up in a season uh, when you don't have any money, when when you can't pay for everybody's dinner, when you ain't treating, when when you can't write the check. Find out who really will stick with you when you got no money. And when she runs out of money, nobody has a prescription. And she has to find out that maybe word of faith is impotent. If they're trying to connect my finance to my faith. Maybe this ain't working for me if it's all about sowing seeds. And I'm still sick. Maybe this really doesn't have the overture I presumed. When I in fact gave for pastor's appreciation. But now, he can't even shake my hand. Many of you in the room are finding out that your favor is not connected to your finance. That really in the inverse, you really don't know who you are to God until you run out of money. When you run out of money, that's when God begins to expose himself in a different way. People who have money really don't need faith. Sometimes you got to run out of money just so you know who God is. And I know not that many of you will shout about it, but there are about a thousand of you that found out in the last 18 months, favor is better than money. That when my money runs out, that's when my favor kicks in. What's amazing is you got people who are jealous of you and they don't know I ain't even got nothing. You know you really anointed when people who got more than you don't like you and you trying to figure out why you hating on me when I ain't even that far along where I need to be. Anybody in here know God's hand is on your life when you walk in the room and Negroes looking you up and down trying to figure out who you are and they don't know I ain't got a title, I don't have a position but wherever I am the glory shows up in front of me. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. She then thought to herself, 
And here's where the enemy becomes anxious. Because it is amazing to know she doesn't think to herself until she runs out of money. I, as long as she had money, she would listen to experts. But when she ran out of money, God help me, she had to find another dimension of thought. Might I suggest to some pastor who's in the room that God never gives you a vision that matches your budget. If, if you can afford to do it, it's not from God. When God gave you the vision, he did not check your finance first. He checked your faith first. And he wants to see, will you trust me when the trustees say, Rev, I don't know how we're going to do this. I, I want to know, will you trust me when it ain't a line item budget? I, I need to know, is there anybody here who's believing God for something you ain't got the money for? Is, is there anybody who's trusting God for something the bank said you don't qualify to get? And, uh, thank you, Holy God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I just got cleared for takeoff. He's, um, he's getting ready to do something that doesn't match your budget. Would you look at the person beside you? Tell him he's preaching to me right now. He's, he, he, he's getting ready to do something for you that don't match your credit score. He's... He's getting ready to do something for you. The IRS says not right now. He's, he's getting ready to do something for you. Your CFO going to have a problem with. I, he said for those of y'all that are shout about it. Before this year is over. I'm going to throw you a surprise party. I'm, I'm going to give you what eyes have not seen. And what ears have not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be, be seated right where you are. Thank you. Ah, 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 thank you. She can. Thank you. I need you to look at your neighbor. Tell him it just got paid for. Hallelujah. Everything your church needs, it just got paid for. Everything your children need, it just got paid for. Eh? Everything you've been praying about, it just got paid for. Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need you to just look down your row and prophesy to somebody. You ought to shout for your next building. You, you ought to shout for your family life center. You, you ought to shout for the school. You, you ought to shout for your mission project. It's already paid for. We got mouths to go before we sleep. Be seated right where you are, please. And she thought to herself, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. All the spectators, please forgive us. This is just for 700 of you. God said, if you shout again, the financial struggle is over. If you ain't been dealing with no money issues, shut up. But if you need God to press down, shaking together and running over, I need you to shout like it's painful. Thank you, Holy God. Be seated, please. She thought to herself, um,
Hallelujah. Y'all hearing that woman scream, she's shouting because her daughter ain't going to have to sit out a semester. I, God, I can't hear nobody. I need you to shout like student loans are paid for. I, I need you to give God glory like the lien is off your house. It's already paid for. Be seated, please. See, um, people behind you can't see. Be seated. She, um, she thought to herself, if I can um, touch. She thought to herself, if I can just um, touch. touch. Come on, Brian. Sometimes. Sometimes the insatiable vice, sometimes the insatiable vice of the gifted is the affliction of the flesh. My God, my God, yes sir, yes sir. She's not trying to figure out how to get money to see another doctor. God help me. In this season she's saying, um, I, I, I just want to be touched. The trap of the intelligent uh, and uh, the albatross around the anointed is the thirst for touch. And uh, Scott, the echo of brokenness has just come into evidence in this generation of preaching. Bishop Richardson, in uh, my grandfather's hours uh, of black preaching, this colloquial expression was never uttered. Uh, in, uh, in my father's time of pastoring, uh, th th this would have been a newfangled idea. It is only within the last 20 years that this generation of preaching has exposed its longing for Mark chapter 5. Because just within the last 20 years, we've introduced a phraseology that was not previously practiced by our preaching tradition. And that phraseology in the last 20 years is turn to your neighbor. And to further underscore our brokenness, turning to my neighbor is not enough. Shake them by the hand. God, I can't hear nobody. And, and for 20 years, nobody has recognized that the person who said turn to your neighbor, nobody turns to them. God, I can't hear nobody. Nobody ever shakes their hand. So everybody in the congregation is getting a touch except for the voice that directed it. And so, what happens? Hallelujah. When the person uh, who needs the healing can't get a touch. God, I can't hear anybody. What, what happens when, when the person who's supposed to be the doctor, hallelujah, is the one that's sick? And you're so busy praying for other folk. Pouring into other folk. God, I can't hear nobody sharing into other folk. And ain't nobody pouring back into you. And you trying to figure out how do I cope when I'm empty? And I, uh, and I need a touch. And because I'm not getting one. It, uh, it creates a void and introduces a vice. Wow. 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 
And so you can't tell with these custom suits on. Awesome. Ferragamo shoes and Gucci belts. You can't tell these dressed up addicts sitting near you. God, I can't hear nobody. They smell good, got a good haircut. Drove down here in that new car, but you don't even know you sitting next to a crackhead who just waiting on that neck fix because the pain won't go away. Jesus. No, we, and so we become guilty of aiding and abetting. Our circle of friends who share our addiction. Some of your vices were introduced to you by other preachers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> You didn't get it from the streets, you got it from your prayer partners. <laughs> yes, sir. I, um, I, uh, I, 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 I don't know how in this social media age I've uh, become the Kardashian of the gospel. Every time I turn around, um, I'm somewhere again in social media. The last month has been harrowing for me on, on so many levels of sanity. Wow. I'm trying to keep my head when all those around me are losing theirs. I had preachers around the country calling me saying, Jay, don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's just an attack. I had bishops calling me from different reformations saying, Jay, keep your head up. I had people in ministry that I trusted call me saying, Doc, this too will pass. Yesterday I shared with you, I'm in a reconciliation meeting with the head of the Bloods and people from the Nation of Islam and street activists. And, uh, I shared with you that uh, the head uh, of the gang had taken out a contract on me in 2011, 2012. And he gets up in the middle of the meeting and says, man, I didn't like you. I didn't like you, but I couldn't believe how, how you kept your composure. He said, um, in no uncertain terms, Bishop Owens, man, when you walked away, I looked at you different. And this brother's got to be about six foot four, has killed 37 people. He says to me with tears coming down your eyes, man, I want to like you. But I don't want you to identify with me. We ain't the same. God, help me this. Uh, and uh, he looked at me and said, in the presence of Muslims in the room, who Farrakhan is for Muslims, you, Jamal, supposed to be for Christians. He said, I want to stand with you, but do me a favor. Jamal, this is what the thug, the gangster, the hood said to me. Jamal, no more scandals. The thug said to me, with tears coming down his eye, live right. Come on, sir. Set yourself free. God, I can't hear nobody. I, I had to be called in the holiness, not from a bishop, but for somebody in the street that want an example. Live right. That's, 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 that's what your generation of millennials who won't come to your church 
They don't want you to be cool. They don't want you to be in the pulpit doing the dab. They want to know, is there an example of holiness? Is there an example of righteousness? Live right. Come on, sir. Be seated. I, I, Set yourself free, man. My time is up. I'm sorry, oh. Bishop. Be, be seated, please. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. It. That's all I need. That's it, Jamal. That's it. Yes, sir. I know ain't nobody told you that in a while now that you got a title, but would you just shout at the people down your row? Live right! See, y'all will shout about money, but you won't shout about holiness. I, I, I need a hundred of you to shout out loud. I gotta live right. And she thought to herself, if I can just touch him, God help me there. It's 12 men standing around her. And she's selective. I don't want just a touch from anybody. God help me, but I know exactly who I need to touch. God help me, she said, I got to break rabbinical protocol. Because from Leviticus, watch this, up until Mark, it is the job of the priest to lay hands on the sick. Hallelujah. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Some of y'all are messed up because you keep thinking about that blind man who got a touch and Jesus said, can you see anything? And he said, I see men as trees and I can't hear nobody in here. And Jesus touched him again. He said, Jamal, when you get to Hampton, tell him I ain't touching nobody. I want to see if the preachers will touch me. I, I can't hear nobody. I, I need just a thousand of you that need to touch God. Would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth like I got to touch him? Uh, I can't find any worshipers I said touch him hallelujah y'all are being too cute but I need those that need God more than anything he, he is the air I breathe and him I live and him I move and him I have my being oh y'all don't feel nothing huh? I said touch him I, hallelujah I can't find worshipers pull on them Hallelujah, I didn't come to be cute. I, I didn't come to be seen. But I gotta touch you. Is there anybody here that needs to touch him again? I need just a thousand of you to open up your mouth. Lord, touch my brokenness. Touch my area of weakness. Touch my addiction. Touch my house. Be seated. Hallelujah. Be seated right where you are. Hallelujah. I got to touch you. Hallelujah. Be seated. I got to touch you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said I got to touch you. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Hallelujah. I, I got to touch you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Balcony, don't leave me by myself. I got to touch her. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm tired of drinking by myself. I'm, Hallelujah. I'm tired of looking for company I can't even have a conversation with. I got to touch him. I, um, I need you to be seated for just one moment. Uh, my time has about elapsed. Hallelujah. I need somebody's hand in your hand. I'm getting ready to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Would you put somebody's hand in your hand? I want you to lightly squeeze that hand and shout out loud, I gotta touch you. I need you to squeeze that hand. Why, Pastor? Because somebody you sitting next to needs to know what a miracle feels like. I, I need you to shout out loud. I gotta touch him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't feel nobody in here. Hallelujah. I wish I had some worshipers right through here. My time is almost up, but God said, if you touch me again, whatever's out of order in your body, I'm getting ready to heal it. I, God, I can't hear nobody. When, whatever's going on in your house, I'm getting ready to shift it. When, whatever's going on with your child, I'm getting ready to break it. I gotta touch him. Somebody's hand is in your hand. I'm not getting ready to pray. I just don't want them to run. I need their hand in your hand. And what is amazing, ladies and gentlemen, is that she's got an issue. Softly, Sean, we got to go. She's got an issue, watch this, in an area where people can't see. Hallelujah. I'm, God is getting ready to touch the person whose hand you're holding. Speak up. In an area you can't even see. God, I can't hear nobody. If, he said, if you give me public praise, I'm going to give you a private breakthrough. If, he said, if you open up your mouth, whatever you've been dealing with that folk can't see, I'm getting ready to touch you. Somebody's hand is in your hand. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And she touched him. Dr. Hale, watch this. And the Bible records, and she felt. Uh, thank you, Rudy. Uh, she felt she was whole. God, help me. Uh, Find me here's what's crazy is that because she's got the issue in a private area, she can't pull her dress up and look. Oh God help me. She she had to just feel that something changed. God, I don't know where my worshipers are, but this ought to be your best praise. God said, when you give me glory, I want you to shout over what you can't see yet. But I need you to praise me like you feel like it's better. I, I need you to shout like the ministry getting ready to take off. I got a feeling. Everything. And the drugs don't work. All she needed was a touch. Cosby, I got in Monday morning, flew into Norfolk and was making my way to the hotel to get ready for this week. And coming out of the bridge, it was just one lane of traffic. And we going at a snail's pace. In my immediate mind balcony, I thought, there was an accident. We're inching along. And I thought maybe construction was taking place. We finally got out of the tunnel. And I could see Bishop White what the problem was. And I bid you adieu. Some, a police car broke down. A police car broke down and nobody stopped to help it. He'd given his life, 
to helping other people. But now that he done got a flat, people just driving around him. And he's sitting there on the hood of his car trying to figure out when will help come for the helper. My time is almost up. Bishop, please forgive me. I, um, there's some people in this room that God brought you in to this service not for sermon notes. Not for innovative ideas. Not to lie about the growth of your ministry. There's some people in this room God's going to use in this season. But you needed to know he's a jealous God. And he said, I got to break it off of you. Because you've been trying everything. And you're still in pain. I know I'm out of order. I know I'm in trouble. I'm not even looking at Dean Higgins or President Reddy. I know I'm in trouble. If y'all don't see me tomorrow morning, it means I got fired. But there's some preachers in this room. Some preachers' wives in this room. Some lay people in this room. Some staff people in this room. Who have been in a heck of a lot of pain. And they haven't been able to break it. I don't know where you are, but I want to pray for you quickly. Closet alcoholic. I want to pray for you very quickly. Chain smoker. I want to pray for you very quickly. Those of you who don't even know, you can right cut up your whole church. Because you think your charisma outweighs your character. For those of you who are struggling in an area of pain and you need God to break it, I don't know where you are. It may just be three of you, but if that's who I'm talking to, I want you to meet me at this altar as quickly as you can. Rev, I got to do better. Folk got no idea that preachers smoke weed too. God, I can't hear nobody. Hallelujah. You ain't even thinking about leaving your wife. You just want to be touched. I need you to come as quickly as you can. Hallelujah. Come on, tithing lottery player. Come meet me at this altar quickly, please. Would you pull in as close as you can? Hallelujah. You live in a double lifestyle. You don't even know that this is the season of exposure. I need you to come as quickly as you can. Dante, what is amazing is that our generation doesn't believe in deliverance. We just believe in discretion. My God, right? God, I can't hear nobody, huh? As long as I don't get caught. But I need you to come as quickly as you can. There are five more of you. I need you to come. You don't even know this is your last emergency exit. Life will show you it's easier to get into something than it is to get out of something. Hallelujah. There's three more of you. I need you to come quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to take that hand of somebody who's standing next to you. Because you can't go to the altar at your own church. God, I can't hear nobody here. But God getting ready to break it free today. Dr. Luther Blackwell told me years ago, preachers are the last people to believe what they preach. We believe it for everybody else, but when it comes to us, we think it's for everybody else. I want those of you who are getting in this room, because there's still a great retinue that belongs here, would you stretch your right hand of faith to this altar? 
He's getting ready to break it. Hallelujah. Sean triumphantly. I said he's getting ready to break it. Hallelujah. You, I know we don't even say this kind of stuff out loud, but God said if you shout, you're going to fall in love with your wife again. If God, I can't hear nobody. If you open up your mouth, you're going to fall in love with ministry again. If, if you shout out loud, you're going to get your passion back. But I need you to break it. Whatever is that area of pain. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that whatever is your area of pain that you are not going back home the same way you came. I can't hear nobody. I said you are not going home the same way you came. Here's for those of you that will shout in the next 72 hours. Whatever weight is on your life is getting ready to be broken. I need somebody to shout like no weapon formed against me. Shout! I need you to cry out loud like you need a fresh touch. I, I need you to shout like you need a fresh touch. I, I need you to praise them like you need a fresh touch. I want you to hug three people around you and tell them you'll never be the same. You'll never, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. The money won't do it. The cars won't do it. The clothes won't do it. The watches won't do it. Get to Jesus. <laughs> 